In a previous video, we wrote a recursive function that would calculate the shortest distance through a maze. That function can be a bit challenging to understand, and so I wanted to help you to understand it by visualizing it. So I've started a file called it mazeviz, and it has the code that we wrote for our maze. It has our two-dimensional array for the maze. It has the shortest path function that we wrote previously. And then I copied in some basically generic code for putting up a window that has a canvas in it. And what we want to do is we want to make it so that this will draw out and show what's going on. In order to do that, how about we write a render maze function. We're going to pass in the maze for this. Uh, I also want to pass in the X and Y locations because they will help us to see what's going on. And then we need the graphics context for our canvas so that we can see what's going on. This doesn't return anything, it just renders to the graphics context. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we need to run through and draw the entire maze. So we're going to have, let's actually make this be uh, um, R for row of, yeah, which is effectively our Y value. So the row, and I realize I have X and Y there. We'll, we'll see what this looks like. Is going to go from zero until M dot length. And then I want to have a column value go from zero until maze or m sorry sub r dot length so it's going to run through every square in there and based upon the value that that square is storing we are going so let's say m sub r sub c we'll do a little match here we have a case for zero, which is an open square. GC dot fill equals color dot. I'm going to draw open squares, I guess, in white. Okay. We need to also have values for negative one and negative two. Negative one is a wall. I'm going to draw the walls in black and I'm going to draw our breadcrumbs in blue. Okay. And now we need to draw a little rectangle for this. So dot and we can go look in the API. Inside of Canvas, Graphics Context, I believe we want a fill rect. Yeah, that'll work. We're going to call fill rect on our X location is the column times um, let's see how about column yeah times the size I have a value up here that I called size and it's the size of my window in pixels divided by the number of columns that we have and then our row times size divided by the number of rows that we have and the size of each one of these the width is there 
and the height is there. Okay, so that should draw out kind of a background of the maze. And then I'd like to draw a circle. And we're going to make this a red circle. And that red circle is going to be located where the uh, where the XY is. So GC dot fill oval of now it's actually going to be pretty much the same code that we have here, but it winds up being drawn out as an oval. And instead of being C and R, a column value is X and Y is our row value. Um, okay, I'm actually ever so slightly worried that I have a transpose in here. So this will render out the, the maze, um, and we can check to see how many typos I've put into this. Yep, we have a few not found color. Okay, that's a simple one to fix. import paint and it looks like that was all of our errors was just needing that import okay we need it so this happens inside of shortest path and when we were when we were visualizing our sorts we saw how we can do this so because this is going to be drawing we need this to happen inside of um, Platform dot run later, and what we are going to run in here is render maze for the maze value, our x value, our y value, and we need the graphics context. And in order for that to work, we have to add that argument to our shortest path. Okay, down here after I pop up the canvas and get the graphics context, I call shortest path. We'll need to pass in the graphics context. I'm doing it inside of a future so that it does not uh, take over the primary processing for our GUI. And not enough arguments to, oh yes indeed. Because our recursive function, we added an extra argument. This is one that is very easy to forget. It needs to be passed in on all of the recursive calls. Okay. Um, we're drawing. This looks okay, other than the fact that it's not actually doing anything for us. One other thing that I did not put inside of here. is a call oh, I guess I could do that um, let's sleep for I don't know, 20 milliseconds so there will be 50 steps that would take <laughs> That might be a little bit too fast, and there is clearly some uh, symmetry issue that's going on. It printed out our 24. We're going to slow this down some so that we can try to figure out what the bug is. I'm drawing one of these. Okay. Yep. So I have the circle is transposed. The squares are drawing in good locations, but the circle is transposed off. I'm, I, I've, because of the way I've drawn this up here, I'm actually flipping my X and Y 
and okay we do get some long jumps in there when things move forward one of the things that you'll note is this is trying every single possible path that can occur um, oh and so yeah this happens when we get to the end of a call Let's also run render at the beginning of the call. This way we can watch the circle going out and then coming back. So every place that is drawn with blue, we've left breadcrumbs. And when the circle moves backwards, it's actually we're popping off of the stack and we're going to go try alternate routes for things. You'll note that right there, because that has four, we have kind of two different alternate routes that we can take. Previously, we had gone down at this junction, so now we have to backtrack to it and try going up. And this winds up trying every possible path through the maze, and then it gives us back the value for the shortest one. So you can watch this and try to you know piece together it's actually interesting to take out some of the walls. If you take out some of the, the walls from this, you'll find that there are a lot more different paths. And we'll come back and talk about that in the next video.